Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and on this video, I'm gonna give you guys a walkthrough tour of the Samsung event that I got to see at CES 2022. Now, there wasn't a ton of new television, but I got a chance to see some technologies, a new operating system, additional to that, a new projector that they're coming out with, but most of all, I finally got to see some of the TVs that I see on their website live, so I'll show you guys those as well. Now that we got that out of the way, if you haven't already, make sure you go and subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell because it does help the channel. With that being said, let's jump right into it. So here we have three Samsung televisions for 2022, which is available in 89 inch, a 101 inch, and a 110 inch screen. And they all have what they call micro LED, which when looking at it, it's gonna give you more of a familiar look like OLED, but you won't have any type of problems with the screen. Now, micro LED is basically these little tiny panels that has red, green, and blue on it, but they individually light up, so that makes the TV more efficient and it makes the black levels much better. And along with a 20-bit grayscale depth, this is gonna give you more details in the scene, over one million steps of brightness and color levels, and this is gonna give you a true HDR experience like you've never seen before. You'll also have this new eye comfort mode. And what this will do for you guys is it will automatically adjust the levels of the brightness and the color tones with a built-in light sensor. So it's gonna be a little bit easier on your eyes. Now, from my understanding, they did step up the audio system as well. Not only that you're gonna get roughly around 100 watts of power, it's gonna have Dolby Atmos sound built right in without having to buy a sound bar or anything additional. And it has a technology called Object Tracking Sound Pro. Now, what that's gonna do is that Samsung added additional speakers in the top of the TV. So this creates more of an immersive sound and it's gonna track the images as it moves back and forth to make the sound that more realistic than we had before. Pretty cool stuff. Then I moved over to the Neo QLED, which is available in a 4K and it is available in 8K as well. But the biggest thing they changed with these new models is that it has a new Neo quantum processor and a new dynamic sound experience. That's an upgrade from last year's model. And this new processor is gonna help the TV have better contrast ratios, so you're gonna get better black tones. And they did step up the brightness from 12 to 14, so you're gonna get a much brighter picture. And this is gonna be very helpful for true HDR content. In fact, the TV lighting control is gonna move from 4,096 up to incredible 16,300 steps of brightness. Now take a look at this 85 inch. You can see on the side of it that it has more like this vented kind of look to it. It looks really premium. On the back of it, you can see there's four speakers on each side for this new audio system. In my opinion, this TV is gonna be insane for people who want a top-end television, but it will be expensive. Of course, you're gonna get the built-in Dolby Atmos, the Object Tracking Sound Pro, and additional to that, it will have the new remote control that doesn't run off of batteries, which I'll tell you guys a little bit later about that in the video. Now, when it comes to gaming, Samsung thought about everything that I could think of. First of all, it's gonna support the GeForce Now, it's gonna support Google Stadia, and this new service called Utomic, so you'll be able to stream 4K games right on your television without the use of a console, but you'll probably have to have about 40 or 50 megabits per second transfer rate to be able to get that experience. Addition to that, the newer model is gonna have four HDMI 2.1s. That's gonna support up to 144 hertz, and that's gonna be for PC users as well as anyone who wants to buy one of the newer generation consoles. If you've been using Samsung televisions for a long time, you probably remember the original Smart Hub that came out a long time ago, but they're gonna be changing the operating system, and I'm not sure if it's gonna be on all TVs, but I know for a fact on the higher end ones. Now, right now, if you go click on an icon, it basically shows you a little pop-up across Samsung televisions. With the new operating system, they're really trying to focus on the user experience. So what it's gonna do, let's say you click on movie at the top, your whole interface becomes movie. If you click on gaming, everything becomes gaming. And that way it streamlines the process even better than it was before. 
Then I moved over to what they call the Samsung frame. And a lot of you guys have been asking me to film this video, but the reason I haven't is because it doesn't appeal to the masses. So you guys might watch it, but I think it's only so many people who want the frame. Now the frame television is a super thin Samsung television that you can put a flush mount on the wall, you hang this picture up, you can get custom frames around it. So whenever it's in ambient mode, then basically it's gonna show like different pictures like Mona Lisa or any type of art that you want. Now one thing I didn't talk about the last TV is that Samsung also is getting involved with a company where you can buy your own art. So what, what I mean by that is that you can buy the art and you own it. It's gonna be based off a of cloud, you pay a certain amount of dollars for it, and once you set it up in your cloud, it removes it from the main cloud, so that art is yours. So I'm not sure that's gonna do anything with art galleries and you know uh, oil paintings, but it is something that's, uh, that's changing the way we look at technology and buying digital uh, information. Next, I made it over to the Serial series of TVs, and if you guys haven't seen this before, it's really unique because the way it works is that it's a 43 inch screen and it comes with a built-in base. Now, whenever you take your smartphone connected, you can send your information over to it, but check this out. Whenever you rotate your phone, the TV rotates as well. So I asked them, who is this for? And they say that people who live in very small dwellings like New York City or something like that, then this is something that's gonna give them a television that's a piece of art, but it allows you to store it easily because you can get wheels on it. And whenever you don't have space or having company over, you can just roll it into your closet, roll it back out when you, whenever you're ready to use it again. Take a look at the surf style television. This is for someone who's more modern. So if you have like deco art or anything and you're very particular about how your house looks and TVs are something you really don't want but you know you need one, then I think the surf series is gonna be great for that just because it has this modern look to it, it's elegant and it, last year model had like this uh, glossy coating on it and they changed that up and put more of this flat uh, screen on it so Whenever it's in picture mode, it looks like you have a work of art sitting there in your living room. And if you're the type of person that money's no object and you have a large gazebo outside, you might want to look at one of these. These are the Terrence television series. Now looking online, you can get it from a 55 inch up to 75 inch, but here's the kicker. They have some that can be partially in the sun and then they have another series that can be fully in the sun. Now I know I didn't talk about price, but they start off at $3,500. And if you want the fully protected 75 inch, you're looking at a whopping $13,000. Now some of the great things about this TV is that you can hook them up to Bluetooth speakers. They're IP55 splash and dust resistance. So if you're the person who has everything, this might be the TV for you. The next device I want to show you guys is the Samsung Freestyle, which has a DLP built-in projector that has a brightness of 500 nits. Inside of it, you're going to get Bluetooth 5.2. It also has the Samsung TV, has a remote control, and it does have a 360 degree sound. Now, one of the things about this particular projector is that you can get it in three different colors, but you can get all these little attachments on it, like your favorite baseball team. And since it does use the LED lights, you don't have to worry about any type of bulb or burnout. But one of my favorite features of this projector was you can have it sitting on the table and aim it to a wall. And that's pretty traditional. But you can turn it and now it's on the ceiling. You can even put it on a stand and point it down to your desk, refocus it, and now you have like a computer monitor that's on your desk and that'd be great for students. So it's probably a product worth checking out. It's available for pre-order on Samsung's website right now. But really was impressive was the Odyssey Arc gaming monitor. This is a 4K monitor with quantum mini LEDs, 165 hertz. And if that wasn't enough, this monitor is completely rotatable. So if you're playing a game, you can have this wide curved screen and immerse you right into all the graphics, or you can turn it sideways and now you can look up and look down. And I thought that was pretty insane to have a monitor like that, but there wasn't a price point on it, but being a 55 inch and what it can do, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be about 2,500 to 3,000. And they did have another monitor set up called the Odyssey Nero, which was a 32 inch, 240 Hertz monitor. Now I asked them, 
Does anyone support that on a video card? And you can't get anything for custom. However, they're just thinking of these concepts of how we're gonna push the gaming to the next level. And don't forget about last year, they had the 49 inch ultra wide screen, and uh, that was a great monitor as well. Switching gears here, I want to show you guys some of the different cardboard setups that you can do with the Samsung box. Now, this is some artwork that people have created using the recycled boxes that comes with the Samsung TVs. But let's be honest, are you gonna really put that in your home? I like to see who's taking a TV box, breaking it down, make it eco-friendly, and uh, setting it somewhere in their house. I, I love the concept of saving cardboard and all that good stuff, but it's just not practical. Another thing I want to show you guys is the new remote controls that's gonna come with the new Samsung televisions eventually. So this is the remote control for the QN85A. You can see that it has a solar panel on the back, but they're gonna be having a new type of remote control that's batteryless. So uh, don't quote me on this, but what is gonna work is that it's gonna use Bluetooth technology. And since it's already transmitting, it's basically charged the battery up just a little bit. So the consistency of that is that it's gonna rely on the TV's Bluetooth to charge the battery. Again, I might've got that all wrong, but here's a demonstration of what it looks like. Pretty amazing what's coming out this technology and pretty scary at the exact same time. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is they did have a display with the Galaxy watches, which included a lot of different accessories and bands, so you can customize them to look any way you want. There was also plenty of different displays showing tablets like the S7 Plus and a few other ones on there. And just like Apple, it looks like Samsung is definitely pushing harder to create their own ecosystem. So they had all these different devices paired up together. Like you would see a notebook with a set of ear pods as well as a smartphone in front of it. So you can create that little setup and then everything connects together through your Samsung account. And of course they had the Flip 3 as well as the Fold phones on display so you can take a look at it. But one of the most impressive things that I saw at this show is that they took a smaller condensed version and they have a robot arm that can literally, you can touch a screen and it will customize the panels for you. So let's say for example, you wanted a red top part and a blue bottom part. You can actually do that from the website, but with this robot, they showed it how it works in real time to show you how you can put your phone together and then it will come up on the stand so you could take a look at it, which I thought was pretty cool. Now, if you made it to this point of the video, it took a lot of work to put all this together for you guys. So I hope you guys appreciate this coverage. Now we'll come out with a few last uh, Consumer Electronic 2022 shows, but I'll just put it on the membership site because I wanna focus on other things on this channel, get back to my TVs and some of the projects that I have going on. And those will pop up in the near future if you're a member to this channel. If you haven't already, make sure you go and give me a thumbs up. If you like this video, give me a thumbs down if you dislike it, but make sure you go ahead and subscribe for the next video, turn on the notification bell. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace. Tech Steve.